minute writing prompt was to write about why you're participating in the course and what you're what you're thinking, feeling, and what motivates you to be um, to be participating yeah. <clears throat> participating in the course. And um, so when I was writing about this, I was obviously I'm teaching the courses, not taking them. Um, but one of the biggest reasons why I'm really passionate about teaching these courses is because as I went through my experiences and um, with psychological flexibility and learning about it and applying it to my own life, and it really started to come to the um, come to the idea of is that one of the biggest things that's impacting us as behavior analysts right now and our ability to address um, to have a more significant impact on the world is our own personal ability to address our issues with cognitive fusion, which are related to our learning history. And so I'm excited to share a couple of stories with you today and hopefully hear back from you all regarding um, experiences that you've had in your life with huge cognitive fusion, as well as exercises that you've um, maybe had experience with or have tried in the past related to um, that, the idea of becoming defused. Um, I'm hopeful that the courses will have a positive impact on everybody who joins our community. So I'm really passionate about not just teaching and not just teaching the continuing education courses, but really focusing on developing a community of behavior analysts who are committed to dissemination. So the long-term goal as we talked a little bit about last week, is to create more of a collaborative between behavior analysts who are really focused, who really want to focus on applications and dissemination of behavioral science to address more, um, more of the pressing um, issues that we face as, as a world. And I'm motivated to continue to uh, teaching um, because of those um, collaboration projects. And there's a lot of over the years, I've made a lot of contacts and networked with other professionals who have really, you know, have really big ideas about how we can apply the science to, you know, more global and pressing issues. Um, but the traction that I've seen hasn't necessarily been there. I mean, over the past year, there's been a, a much bigger push in regard to um, dissemination efforts and more global applications. And so I'm excited to talk to you all about what you're doing and some of the ideas that I've had and how we might be able to collaborate at some point in the future. So a little bit of um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, in, as, I as we were going through the video and uh, reflecting back on the uh, reflecting back on the lesson from last week and then beginning to plan and put you know put together all the put together the final touches on the presentation for this week I really started to um, realize how much um, cog cognitive fusion pulls at me constantly throughout every day and that's not you know that's not uncommon so you know I've done I've done a lot of work personally with the acceptance of commitment therapy and working through the get out of your mind and into your life workbook. Um, and for those of you who, who haven't gotten it yet, so this is the work, self-help workbook um, that is part of this course and one of the ones that I went through. Um, you know, for, I'm, I've worked on some personal work and a lot of you probably have done similar things, but just because you've gone through some of those experiences and done some, some of the, the personal activities and planning, it doesn't mean that there was a magic wand that was, you know, that was waved and all of your, all of your problems went away. Um, what it generally means is that you're more aware of those, of those things and as they're, as they're happening. And as you become more aware, you can um, make those, choose those decision points at which you're going to stop and realign with your, um, with your core values again. Get out of your mind, get out of that the traditional or the, uh, like those, those fused patterns of thoughts and words and actions. 
um, and you can, you know, more readily make those shifts. It doesn't mean that you aren't going to, um, you're not going to be impacted by those things. We are, we're all human, our brains all work in very similar ways and we all get fused at some point. Um, so all, as we're going through all of this, remembering that we're all works in progress, none of us are perfect, we're all, we all have our own learning histories and what, but what's most important and what I hope that we can work through over the next, um, the rest of the course over the next few weeks is this idea of constantly being vigilant about what's going on in your mind and developing the skills that will help you make those pivots more, red more rapidly and more readily in the moment. Um, so another thing that I was reflecting on as I was, as I was reflecting on the lesson from last week and then also preparing for this week is I realized that I had kind of that in my kind of fusion with my previous conceptualized self was that I had a very strict idea of what a presentation and a training was supposed to look like. And so, you know, the original idea and the original plan was to create more of a community where we're coming together and learning together and collaborating. And then last week as being the first week, I found myself really relying more on um, the PowerPoint and that idea that you know the the books that we're basing these classes off of are written by the experts in this field, and we need to let the experts' words you know speak for themselves. And I can you know I could put my little spin on it, but the reality is that you know what they're saying is most important. And I took some time to reflect on that idea, and it you know it's just that common idea that you know, the published ones, the ones who have already you know, done the work and put out the materials, those are the experts that we must, that we must revere and hold, you know, hold their weird words dear. And, you know, we're but, you know, lowly, lowly people on the totem pole. And, you know, being able to hear, you know, hear those thoughts and realize that, that, you know, just because somebody has done something already, doesn't mean that they're necessarily the, you know, that they're the only ones who have those thoughts or the only ones who think, you know, who have um, worked in those areas and who have had experiences that are valuable to share and to learn from. And so you know, as I'm, you know, my own personal journey working through this, being able to, deep, you know, identify those areas where I'm still confused with those, um, those kind of common thought patterns and I can you know, focus on be becoming more psychologically flexible um, and creating more peace for myself um, as, you know, as I'm digging in and really getting to know you all um, through this experience. The one thing that there, you know, there's a lot of things that psychological flexibility as we, as we um, learn about it and experience it and practice these skills, that you will, um, you know, that you'll, as you're developing the skills, you become stronger and more easily able to use those skills in the moment. But the most important thing that I have found is that by developing a more flexible sense of self, I have then developed a more, a stronger sense of caring and compassion for myself and for others and being able to act in accordance with those two values, even when things are stressful and there's anxiety and my heart's racing and it's hard to breathe, being able to you know, take that moment to you know, step back, take a breath, stop, and really listen to what's going on so we can, um, so we can move forward in a, in a way that is going to be adaptive and you know, meaningful in your, in your environment. Okay. So I am going to I'm going to assume that one of two things are true. I'm going to assume that most of you have had some exposure to acceptance and commitment therapy, relational frame theory, and um, psychological flexibility literature. 
um, either through books that are the basis of this course or through other research that we've done personally. Um, so my goal isn't to dive really deep into the core processes for each of the psychological flexibility pivots, but I will talk about them. I, you know, I will talk about them and make sure that they I've explained them clearly. So we're all on the same page. But what I really want to get into is more of the practice. So more of the modeling for you and talking about my own personal experiences to illustrate what these things actually look like in real life. So you can start to create those um, relations for to your own experience and create those connections. Um, as well as more of the like, hands-on role-playing type of experiences because as we were talking about last week with the behavioral skills training model, if you're only focused on the instruction and the knowledge building part of it, and you're not, if you're, and then you're, but you're not getting the hands-on experience with it, you're not going to be able to, or the likelihood of you being able to utilize those skills in the moment when they're needed is much lower because you haven't actually practiced the skill. And we all know that um, the, only, the only way to learn how to do something, to acquire a skill, be able to use it efficiently, generalize that skill and maintain it over time is by practicing it. And so those same same thing, same, app, same principles that apply to this, the individuals that we work with and our, you know, our individual clients, and is, they're all, you know, it's all the science of behavior and learning. It's all applicable to ourselves as well, which is the, the, the crux of this um, course series. So today we're going to be talking about all about diffusion. So in the in the book, A Liberated Mind, um, and it's this, this version, the Liberated Mind, How to Pivot Toward What Matters is the version that we're using. There is, an, there is another version available that I don't currently have. Um, uh, but in, in there, the first pivot is diffusion. And so diffusion is this, is the idea that every, every stimulus that comes into our brain, every, every stimulus that is perceived, triggers a response pattern in your brain. And depending on your history of reinforcement and punishment, that um, response pattern can be very automatic and can um, seem, seem, seem as though it's beyond your control. So when this happens, then there's this series of thoughts, words, and actions that occur as a, in, in response to, or as a response chain to that stimulus. And so when those thoughts, words, and actions are so tightly linked because they've been highly reinforced and they've been practiced over time, it's very, it can become very difficult to break those cycles and break those chains of, um, of behaviors. And so as we are exploring what that, what that really means, and especially right now in this moment when we're focused on our own personal selves, being able to understand how, how automatic your thoughts are, your language center is constantly producing thoughts, wor words in, you know, in your internal environment based on the other input that is coming in through your other sensory modalities. So whatever visual stimulus, auditory, um, your tactile, proprioceptive, the taste, the smell, and then any other of the physiological um, stimuli which are present in your brain and your body, those, those stimuli trigger response patterns which are generally associated with language because we are, as humans, we are, um, our language centers are well-developed are, you know, well and we use that 
we use our thoughts to make sense of our world and make decisions about about how to act. And so when those thought patterns are so tightly linked and so automatic, it can it can automatically lead to and cause suffering because those automatic thoughts which have been programmed aren't necessarily the most adaptive response in the moment it's just the most practiced the most reflexive response in the moment and um, so that can that can lead to a lot of trouble because you know a lot of the problems that i personally deal with for instance have to do with self-doubt so you know something happens and then um and then there's you know a, a concern that something is is going wrong and automatically um i start thinking oh no everybody you know people are going to be upset with me and what i'm going to do and it you know it it almost automatically um triggers your fight or flight your autonomic um, nervous system where your um your body has released certain you know hormones and neurochemicals that trigger a that fight or flight response inside um and and it can pull you know it can it can pull you and sway your decision making abilities um because when when thoughts trigger those physiological responses and when and then your system is flooded with those neurochemicals that causes your um that causes your response some responses to be more likely and some responses to be less likely depending on your your history of um, your history of learning and so being able to take a step back um and li really listen to your listen to your thoughts hear what's being said by the dictator within and then um you know actively making choices to not give in to that pull of avoidance so you know I, there's something that's going wrong i have a you know i have this automatic triggered response i and i go into a flight in, into flight mode I, i'm going to avoid i'm going to ignore i'm going to run away from that problem um if once you become more aware of those patterns and what it feels like and sounds like when those things happen for you in your own body and your own brain it can as you develop those skills it will become easier and easier to let go on purpose um, and kind of fight those um, or you know, combat those those reflexive behavioral patterns and those reflexive tendencies so we're always or our brains are always you know working to problem solve taking in pieces of information trying to put them together and make sense out of the whole given all the information that's coming in. The, the issue in our, you know, in our daily lives is generally that there's so much input coming in um, that our systems tend to become overwhelmed with the amount of information all at one time. And so, you know, all this information, your brain's trying to, okay, you know, these things go together and I'm gonna put them over here, I'm gonna store this in the, them in this area, um uh and you know the, your brain's you know deciding what to attend to what to ignore um and trying to put all that information together it can become overwhelming and so as we develop the skills of identifying and then diffusing from those thoughts and the from those strong er yearnings and urges and, and behavioral patterns you you will begin to get um have this sense of transformation in your life because it you know it's almost like as you practice those skills and they become more um fluent then it's easier to diffuse in the moment and it you can you know you will start finding yourself making more rapid changes in the moment and 
um, one of the things for me and one of the and one of the more common things as you're developing the uh, uh, greater sense of cognitive flexibility and cognitive flexibility skills is that you might you know, might find yourself being feeling and being more creative and what I you know what I attribute this to is that when you're in the moment and you're not allowing all of the external noise to draw your attention away, you're able to use your full brain capacity to respond to what's currently right in front of you in your immediate environment, as opposed to your, your made up environment, if you will, that is composed of all of your thoughts about worrying about what happened in the past and worrying about what's happened for now. All right, so the three, the three things that we are going to do today and um, it to accomplish our goal of learning about how to diffuse from the negative noise is we're first going to discuss our discuss the barriers to achieving your goals and describe how um, describe different diffusion exercises. So I'll talk about a range of diffusion exercises and then how to create a plan for actually using those diffusion exercises in the moment. 